Good morning, everyone, afternoon and evening. Uh, today is Monday. Today is the start of a new week. And with the start of a new week, we're also starting something uh, new. As, as we get deeper into this patch, uh, some players perhaps start getting somewhat bored of the repetition of their main characters. They might start looking into, into something new to play, something new to explore. Perhaps they start eyeing on some of the more popular specs for this tier that they have not played. Start thinking about alts and other characters to play. So we're gonna be starting this new uh, guide series of videos on several specs. And we're gonna be starting, of course, with the popular ones, with the flavor of the month, once. So, because it was kind of dull to go for more popular specs and specs that players might already know quite well, it was it was the logical choice to start with Survival Hunter. Survival Hunter has been memed for years for not really being a too good of a spec, really. So, it is quite surprising that now in 9.2 they find themselves being one of the better performing DPS specs for melee at the very least. They are at the moment the better performing melee DPS spec in the raid overall and the second most popular melee DPS spec in Mythic Plus. And in the highest of keys also they are being very often taken as one of the specs. So it is quite a, a, a quite wanted and in demand spec right now which was which was why it, it, it's going to be the first of our of our specs for our review of uh, exactly how do they work in this tier how do they work in 9.2 their rotation their legendaries their abilities and talent options etc etc how does survival work so we have to start immediately by saying that survival while being likely the more complex of the hunter spec and the ones that has the more variation in what they do it is still quite a simple spec all three hunter specs are not particularly difficult so survival as well is rather straightforward what makes survival even more straightforward if you were thinking of uh, of trying it out is that they are quite similar and um, to the point that they are almost identical in whether or not they are playing in the raid whether or not they are playing in mythic plus what choices of talents what choices of legendaries they are going to be playing and choosing for different activities they are very very on rails when it comes to options so they, they, they're not going to be changing drastically they're not going to be changing too much depending on the activity so talking about their activities let's start with this what you see here is the talent options that survival hunters are going to be choosing in pretty much all of the PvE situations, whether it is Mythic Plus or Red Encounters, because it is currently the strongest one. As you can see here, I added the possibility of camouflage and binding shot. These are more for, for Mythic Plus, for utility and safety options in Mythic Plus. But besides that, when it comes to actual damage choices, this is what a survival hunter is going to go with. Survival hunter used to have a possible different option for going single target, for going raid build, which has been defeated. It has, it has been overtaken by the one build for everything thanks to their tier set. The tier set is likely one of the strongest of the tier sets available right now for DPS specs. They have a very, very powerful synergy with their kill command and their bombs, their wildfire bombs that uh, get talented into wildfire infusion. This is why this talent choice, this talent setup is being chosen for both Mythic Plus and Red Encounters. Because the two piece set bonus gives you a 40% chance when Kill Command resets to get a free wildfire bomb with no cooldown, and the four piece gives you 30% more damage to your wildfire bombs, and if you gain the buff of the two piece, the damage increase is 80. Because of this power put into the bombs, then the bomb build is also going to be chosen in single target as well, not just in AoE like it was before. And the same goes for the choices of most talents. They are going to line up themselves to, to focus around this tier set. For example, the first talent row, you're going to be always picking Alpha Predator because it's the talent that gives you two kill command charges. Considering how important it is to reset the cooldown of kill command, that's what you always want to take. Obviously, in the second talent row, we are always going to be taking guerrilla tactics because, once again, it gives you two charges of wildfire bomb. And considering how important the damage of wildfire bomb is, you will always be taking this one. Another one of the must pick talents is going to be Bloodseeker because this is going to pretty much give you for free, really, 10% attack speed in single target fights and even more 
in multi-target fights. You know, this is this is Bloodseeker on Skolex, which is just one target. Bloodseeker on Skolex is active 97% of the time. So for 97% of Skolex, you're gaining 10% more attack speed for you and for your pet. The weakest of talents that gets always chosen is Tip of the Spear. Tip of the Spear increasing the damage of your Raptor Strike is not that important, we will see why. And then you have the last one, the cornerstone of the talents of survival, which is Wildfire Infusion. This is what makes the entire spec really work. Uh, changing your normal uh, bomb, your normal Wildfire Bomb, into three different ones, RNG, they're gonna rotate uh, amongst each other, the Shrapnel Bomb, the Volatile Bomb, and the Pheromone Bomb, having all different effects. They will all be doing the same thing, which is 50% attack power damage on cast and 100% uh, attack damage dot for six seconds and then you have the special effect after this change of how the bombs work is very very important because two of the bombs are just going to be mostly passive damage shrapnel bomb is just going to make your focus spender apply a dot a bleed dot that can stack up three times on enemies as the extra effect then you have volatile bomb which will be doing extra damage to targets affected by serpent sting and will refresh Serpent Sting, so it's it's less it's less GCDs you have to cast by freely refreshing Serpent Sting, and then you have the winner. You have the most important one, which is the Pheromone Bomb. This is the most important one for pretty much everything about your spec because of the special effects it has. The special effect is the one that gives Kill Command a 100% chance to reset against targets affected by Pheromone Bombs. You know, by default, Kill Command only has a 25% chance to reset, while this one is going to give it a 100% chance, which becomes very, very powerful with your two-piece. Remember, the two-piece set bonus of survival is the one that makes your Kill Command resetting have a 40% chance to make your next Wildfire Bomb free. That is why it is so important to get Pheromone Bombs and spam a bunch of Kill Commands while the target is affected by the 6 second dot generated by pheromone bombs. This is the result of a pheromone bomb working properly. This is a 12 second window of cast time of a survival hunter. Wildfire bomb has an 18 second recharge, yet despite having an 18 second recharge, in these 12 seconds you get to see six bombs being cast. The reason why you are free to cast six bombs in 12 seconds when you should only cast two is because you are getting resets of your kill command, which give you resets of your wildfire bomb charges. That is how you get to do so much AoE damage. Of course, we are talking about AoE damage because the single target damage of survival is much weaker. They don't really have anything that can power themselves up like the bombs do in AoE when it comes to single target. So. Their strength is primarily on two targets and up. <laughs> the more targets you go, the stronger you become. Even if you got the nerfed, sure, even if now your damage is weaker beyond eight targets, you're still very, very strong in AoE. Now, the rotation, as far as the rotation complexity goes, it doesn't really change if you're trying to hit uh, multiple targets or if you're hitting one. You're still spamming kill command as much as you can because you want the resets. You're still using your bombs whenever they are active and the only thing you're changing is swapping Raptor Strike, which is the single target focus spender with Carve, which is your AOE focus spender. What is the difference between the two? The difference is that they are both useless, but there is one crucial difference. While Raptor Strike is properly useless and you actually want to only use Raptor Strike whenever you are in your downtime, for example here, even though Raptor Strike consumes focus, you can see here how often a survival hunter is going to stay at max focus, how often a survival hunter is going to ignore spending focus. Why? Because other things like kill command and the bombs are much more important than spending focus. Here, a normal survival hunter is going to generate 2600 focus with kill command and is going to waste 2000 of it because it's busy casting bombs and casting kill command again. So Raptor Strike doesn't get casted often because the damage it does is very low. However, in AoE, Carve becomes much more important. So while it is not as much of a priority to dump your focus in single target with Raptor Strike because it doesn't really give you anything else, other than damage, and the damage it does is bad, 
in AoE, you still see that Carve is garbage. You see that its damage is pathetic, laughable even. However, Carve has a special effect. Carve gives you one second cooldown of your bombs per enemy hit up to five. So the TLDR is that in Mythic Plus, whenever you Carve, you get five seconds off your bombs. That is why it becomes much more important to be using Carve in AoE packs, in, in basically in Mythic Plus. But besides Carve, as you can see here, besides trying to use Carve uh, whenever it's up, the rest of the rotation for Suvala is going to be the same. You use Kill Command, you keep using Kill Command, as it resets you keep using Kill Command, and in between these Kill Command resets you are using your bombs. <laughs> when, you have, when you have some free GCDs to spare, you can use Carve to get even more cooldown reduction on your bombs. Those are basically the three buttons you're going to be using the most. Sometimes, when there are some pulls, you know certain enemies are going to last for quite a bit, you can start using Serpent Sting as well. Because you also know that thanks to your bombs, thanks to your Volatile Bomb, you will be able to refresh the duration of those Serpent Stings for free. So it's also quite handy. But besides that, the main, the main rotation of a survival is going to be in these three abilities. Wildfire Bomb and Kill Command in all situations, and then Carve if it's AoE, and Raptor Strike if it's single target. Not much else is going to change. So even though the talents are exactly the same for survival, there is a small, a small variation in Mythic Plus and in Red Encounters, which is the difference in Covenants. In Mythic Plus you're going Kyrian, in Red Encounters you're going Nightfair. Why? In Mythic Plus it is more important to have shorter, more effective cooldowns. In this case, your Resonating Arrow only having one minute cooldown fits very well Mythic Plus trash packs, as opposed to uh, Wild Spirits, which is a two minute cooldown, so it's less effective. The other benefit of being a Kyrian is that you can go Mechanicus, so it gives you even more CDR to your Kyrian ability, and you also get Hammer of Genesis. Hammer of Genesis is the Soulbind effect that gives you 15% haste for uh, 10 seconds, whenever, basically whenever you start a new pool in Mythic Plus. This is very important, it's very strong in general, but it becomes even more important for a survival hunter because survival focuses on haste. You saw, you saw how busy they are with insta casts. You, you saw how busy they are with trying to make their casts as fast as possible. You know, their, the default global cooldown is one and a half seconds, and with haste you can bring it down to 0.75 seconds. So getting free haste on pool is very strong for a spec that focuses on haste as well. So overall, Kyrian is the better choice in Mythic Plus. Inward Encounters is not as much. Inner Encounters, having stronger, bigger cooldowns for the bigger, more important phases becomes stronger. And at the same time, you don't gain as much benefit from Hammer of Genesis Inward Encounters, so you can switch to Nightfair for uh, also stronger single target damage thanks to your Covenant Legendary. Obviously, obviously changing Covenant also changes your Covenant Legendary, but the main Legendary, the standout standard pick for Survival is still Wildfire Cluster. Because of the resets of your tier set, because of how much you get to cast more bombs, obviously Wildfire Cluster becomes very, very powerful. So it is the uh, Legendary you're going to be using all the time in PvE content because of the massive damage, over 50% of your damage, nearing 60% of your damage will be done by your bombs in pretty much any uh, type of damage profile. So more, more bomb damage is always good for a survival hunter. Survival, while it is very popular and very used right now in Mythic Plus, doesn't have something that you thought was going to be very in demand in Mythic Plus, which is Burst. Survival gets a little bit more help in their Burst. Survival was never known, even before this patch, for having a lot of Burst. Previously, Coordinated Assault was their only cooldown, basically, they could use, and it was rather weak. Now it has been made a little bit stronger <laughs> because of their passive effect, which, again, synergizes very well with their tier set. Their passive effect is that while Coordinated Assault is active, Kill Command chance to reset is further increased by 25%. So even if, even if the enemies don't have the Pheromone debuff that gives you a 100% chance to reset Kill Command, you still have an extra chance thanks to Coordinated Assault. The cooldown being 2 minute lines up perfectly with Wild Spirits and can line up one every other resonating arrow of Kyrian. Still, it's not super strong of a burst, it's just that, it's just that survival has such high, consistent 
AoE damage that it looks like it feels like they are constantly using burst cooldowns, like they are a mage constantly in combustion. Not really, it's just that their AoE damage is very high by default. It's not too much thanks to, to burst cooldowns. What about, what about their weaknesses though? Because up to this point we have been raving and praising the AoE damage of survival, the very good synergy that they have been able to combine, this exodia of power that came together in 9.2 between their kill command and their bomb synergy, which also makes it a rather simple spec to be able to perform so well. We have said, we have said already their single target is quite weak. You can see a pure single target fight like Skolex, you see survival is predictably towards the bottom. Even a fight mostly on two targets, they still don't perform as well because two targets is still not quite enough for their AoE to start ramping up, so they are again towards the bottom half. So that is their first weakness. The other weakness, however, is their defensives, their survival. I know, I know, they are called survival hunter and yet their survival is terrible. This is not true, just a survival hunter weakness. The entire class as a whole is very fragile, is very weak. They are, they are one of the few specs to not really have a default damage reduction ability. They have exhilaration, which is a heal, so doesn't actually prevent the damage. They have aspect, they have aspect of the turtle. <clears throat> which is a reflect, it's an immune, it also reduces the damage for 30%, but you mostly use it when you want to immune something. So, as a hunter, if you are out of your immune, all you have left is a single puny heal. You don't actually have any strong, thick defensive that can help you through a certain situation, you don't even have multiple defensives, like other range specs like warlocks, for example, or druids, or mages. As a hunter, you are much more fragile, you are much more liable to be hit. This is why you have to sort of engineer yourself to start using conduits to even help you stay alive. Something like Resilience of the Hunter. You have to start using things like Feign Death to not only, when you can, avoid being targeted, that is also a defensive in and of itself. You are targeted by Tarvold, the second boss of uh, Sanguine Depths for the big damage spike, you can just feign that and avoid it. However, you can also maximize the feign that to take less damage, up to almost 13% less damage taken for 8 seconds with feign that. That is what you have to do as a hunter to try to stay alive because of how essentially squishy you are as a spec. The other negative, the other negative which is not too much of a negative, you know, in general, but you could say that it's a negative because you are a melee spec, so you're not ranged, and you don't bring anything to the raid, or to Mythic Plus, really, in general. As a spec, you really don't have any niche that you can fit. You do have some, I guess, minor praise for being able to bring Binding Shot to Mythic Plus, for example, and you are one of the specs that has the Enraged spell, Tranquilizing Shot, right? But that's very minor, you know? As, as, as a spec, you have no raid buff, you have no raid debuff, you have no particular mechanic that can help cheese things. You don't really have anything too special that you can bring as a spec, so it is easier to be benched the moment your damage is not up to par. You know, it's much harder to bench, for example, specs like Demon Hunters, or specs like Windwalker Monks, or specs like Frost Death Knights, if the fight in particular requires them. Perhaps because of grips are very important, and then of course the raid debuffs or the raid buffs needed from certain specs, Survival doesn't really have any. So it is it is reasonable to bunch this together as being a weakness for the spec as a whole. Now, with this being said, we have gone over how survival works at the moment and why is it doing so well, what prompts them to synergize so well between their kill command and their wildfire bomb setup in both Mythic Plus and Red Encounters thanks to their tier set. Yes, yes, you can feel sad later on because this is, at the end of the day, a board power. So you have not become stronger because you just happen to be strong by yourself, you just happen to, to have scaled with gear. You have become stronger because of a tier set that might go away, you might lose this interaction with your bombs and turn, again, to be much weaker than before, but 
if I were a survival hunter main or if I were thinking about playing survival as an alt right now, I just would enjoy the moment considering the times survival has had in the previous expansions and in the previous tiers of Shadowlands has not really been very strong whatsoever or considered by the community whatsoever, I would just enjoy it for now. I would worry about the possible loss of our powers later on. For now, I would just enjoy the spec for what it is, which is a meta spec is what it is. So we have gone over our review of survival. We are going to be looking at another spec probably tomorrow and I'm going to go for ranged this time around. I am accepting suggestions in the comments as to which uh, range DPS spec you are more interested right now to go over. So for now, I'm going to leave you to the rest of the start of your week. Thank you guys for watching the video. You can help supporting me and my children by liking and commenting on the video. Of course, as I said, interest in range DPS specs to go over next is going to be welcome down in the comments. And then of course you can subscribe to the channel. I am also, I have been told by my manager that I am also available on Twitter. And then you can also support me on Patreon over there, up in the corner. Thank you guys again. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, okay. Okay, the dark is a little bit too dark. Ah, oh, okay. This is better now.